everyone, welcome back. And today we have our special guest, Katie from Arctic Fox Weddings today. Um, so Katie, tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, so my name's Katie. I'm a Gold Coast wedding planner. Um, I've been in business since 2013 and we do weddings and events all from Sunshine Coast all the way down to Byron Bay and working at a different range of venues from full DIY style properties through to your uh, restaurant style venues like Cool Bar Downs. So today we're going to be talking about DIY, is it worth it? Um, so today we're going to start off with the do's and don'ts of DIY. So yes. our first up we'd like to talk about is table centerpieces. Yeah, absolutely. So we work with a huge range of brides. So sometimes they like to do full DIY themselves and then other times they'll leave it to the professionals to come and bring their vision to life. Um, so my tip with DIY centerpieces is be realistic in what you can do. Um, so making sure that if you're wanting to do your own flowers or your own centerpieces, that it's something that's going to be achievable with either getting yourself to do it with your limited skills or relying on friends and family as well. So making like a centerpiece might be just all baby's breath or just providing the candles and getting a florist to do the flowers for you. So kind of picking and choosing which areas you want to do DIY. And perfect. And also just chatting with the venue about the access time and the amount of time that you do have to set up the tables and pieces on the day. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of our restaurant style venues that we work at um, allow access the morning of the wedding. Um, so while the bride's getting ready, getting their hair and makeup done, that's when you generally get access to go and fully set up. So we do a lot of on the day setups. Um, and then on the flip side, if you did want to do that DIY, as I said, you'd be getting ready as a bride, so then you would have to rely on your friends and family to tell them exactly what you're wanting and hope that they do a good job. <laughs> so our verdict on wedding centerpieces would be? Do, but be realistic. So kind of pick and choose and still get a little bit of help if needed, if it's a little bit more of a intricate style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about wedding cake? Should we make our own wedding cake or should we not? That's a big no no for me um i've just seen inside a wedding cake before and i think the reason why you do pay so much more for a wedding cake as opposed to just going to the cheesecake shop and getting say a 50 dollars normal cake is the amount of work that goes into them like from a caterer's perspective as well when i've seen them chop into the cake there's timber supports and there's these boards and there's all these different fillings and all of this gorgeous stuff that goes into making a wedding cake so much more special than just a standard cake. And what if you don't cook it all the way through? That would be very good. <laughs> That's the thing, like I've never made a cake that is going to feed a hundred people before, so I wouldn't even know where to begin. And realistically, I guess cake makers do quite often bake cakes a day or so before they actually mm -hmm. freeze their cake. So it's not just a day process. A lot of the time with wedding cakes, it's multiple days to create your special cake. Yeah, it's definitely well worth it. And I know wedding cakes, they are really varied in their price. So just shop around and see if there's someone whose style that you love and um, definitely you want it to taste as good as it looks. So I'd be prepared to spend a couple hundred dollars or even up to five, six hundred dollars on a cake easily for a hundred people. And then even think about delivering it as well. Just taking that stress out of that yes. 40 degree car ride on the way to deliver the wedding cake yeah. or it falling over in the back of the van. And like oh my goodness. that just to me yeah. would be, I'd end up paying someone just so they could make sure my cake got there on their, on yeah. my special day. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a don't for me on the DIY front for a wedding cake. Perfect. So we're going with a don't. Yeah. Um, so definitely don't do your own wedding cake. No. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we're going to talk about hair and makeup. What do you think about doing your own bridal hair and makeup yeah I feel like it's such a beautiful occasion and it's such a fun morning getting ready with all your girls and then sometimes you've got mother of the bride as well like that so getting ready with them all together in a room hair and makeup done it just makes it so much more special and enjoyable and then you know you're going to get a good result as well that translates across to getting your photos taken and like if your photographer's using a flash and there's so much that goes into it and then nothing product, like looking white on your wedding day <laughs> no, or like weirdly shiny or after just getting a few ceremony kisses and then you've got like no makeup on the end of your nose or something silly like that I just think it would um yeah, not make it a very nice memory if you had some disaster. And quite often photographers, I mean, it's not for you photographers, but your hair and makeup artists will make sure that your makeup is going to last the duration of the day. You are yeah. up super early in the morning. Yes. Um, so making sure that it's going to last um, the whole duration. Um, but also they generally do it a little bit thicker than your general foundation yeah. um, or a little bit darker just because the lighting of your photographer um, will wash you out. So yeah. um, we do find that we'll probably 
probably be best um, as a don't DIY. Yeah. Um, better to get your um, professionals in for this one. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think one of the things I tell all of my brides with getting their hair and makeup trials done, try to do it on a nice occasion as well, like at your hen's party, for example. If you can get your trial done for your hair and makeup, then you're looking amazing for your hen's party. And then you're kind of getting a little bit more bang for your buck there with um, obviously knowing how it looks on the day. Perfect. So we're going with a don't um, for yes. hair and makeup. Yeah. What about invitations and place cards? Um, that for me, I think is something that a lot of our brides are starting to do themselves. There's so many amazing platforms like Etsy and things like that, where you can buy a really cheap template and then you just import all of your names and dates and things like that, send it off to Officeworks and they can print it. And I know a lot of our brides who have gone through office works for example you can still get like the really big um, a1 welcome signs and seating yes. charts and they do all of that for you and they're really good quality so i'd say do for the stationery yeah absolutely do yeah definitely agree on that one yeah um what about bouquets and buttonholes um and any additional flowers for mother of the bride and mother of the groom yeah so we as a business we launched flowers back in 2018 um, and so we've got a florist who works for us and I was genuinely shocked by the amount of work that goes into the wedding flowers. There's so much in the lead up. So yes. for example, a normal wedding for us, our florist will um, order the flowers a few weeks or even a month in advance to make sure that the bride gets exactly what she's after. Um, and then she has to go up to either the Brisbane markets or we get them delivered. Um, but then it's little things like stripping all of your roses of thorns and prepping them, putting them in the fridge. We've got special floral fridges which have the right humidity. It's not just like something that you can put your food in as well. Um, and then all of that as well as the wiring and the like with the buttonholes we use like little pins and corsages and the tape and there's so much involved that um, yeah I just can't see how you would get the same look unless you were obviously a professional florist yourself of course, yeah. um, but if you're just like a normal person who's wanting to dabble I'd probably recommend dabbling in the flowers for maybe your table center pieces just keeping it simple but definitely for bouquets and buttonholes flower crowns or like the big arbor pieces that you can reuse at your reception I definitely get um, those made by a professional florist because they're going to be in a lot of your photos. The good thing with the florist is if they've got multiple bookings in that same weekend, they don't have to purchase a whole bunch like we have to from the wholesalers yes. for your bouquet. So you might actually get a little bit more of a cost effective solution by someone like that than having to, for you, for example, to go to the markets and you might want a few quicksand roses. You have to buy 12 of them at a minimum and normally it's 25. And so it's a lot harder than it actually seems. Perfect. So our verdict on doing your own flowers would be don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> so music. So do we do our own music or do we don't? There's a lot of options out there, whether you go acoustic or whether you go bands or DJs. Yeah. Um, or I guess you could go something a little bit more simpler like an iPod or an iPhone, um, yeah. something along those lines. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think if you are a little bit more on the budget conscious side, if you can splash out, I think it's really beautiful to have an acoustic person like singing as you walk down the it's aisle. definitely my favorite. <laughs> yeah, um, it just creates such a really nice feeling. But for the receptions, for example, um, if your venue has built in speakers or if you can hire a speaker, I know that's a thing as well where you can Absolutely. hire in a big speaker. Um, yeah, you can just create your own playlist on Spotify now. Make sure you download them so that you're not relying on Wi-Fi. Make sure you put your phone on airplane mode because yes. otherwise your phone will <laughs> ring. Um, a lot oh of the goodness. time we generally find that our clients will use a friend's phone just because yeah. they like to keep theirs with them in their car um, as they're arriving to the venue just so that in case someone needs to contact them. Yeah. So they'll use a friend's phone and they don't know you're getting married today. Yeah. So someone will ring them and it will go through the speakers, oh. um, which is definitely <laughs> not what you want as you're walking down the aisle. No. And another thing, if you are going to do your own music for the ceremony, check with your celebrant that they'll actually play the songs for you. Sometimes they don't because obviously they want to be timing you down the aisle properly and things like that. So um, check with them. Some of them do, some of them don't. And then if they don't, you'll just need to rely on a friend or family member just to press play and then stop it for when you guys start speaking. Absolutely. But and yeah. do a rehearsal. Yeah, That's what your definitely. rehearsals are all about. So yeah. booking with your venue, um, they're generally free. So why not do it? Um, a lot of couples do just one song for the signing. I would always recommend two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just so that you don't run out yes. um, because you don't want to be standing there awkwardly with nothing in the background. Yeah. Um, so always make sure that you do step out your music because you don't want to, you are the last to walk down the aisle. Yeah. You also don't want to be stuck with no music and no. then you're going to have to play the song from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, all the song runs out halfway down the aisle because yeah, that's very embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then definitely for the reception, just kind of having a think about 
how many hours like your main meal is going to be so you can have like a bit more of a chill vibe and then maybe like for your dancing you want to have like some good songs that you know that you're going to feel the dance floor that everyone's going to have heaps of fun too so just kind of work it out that way with the timing and always have extra <laughs> <laughs> or even pop it on your invitations to ask um, your guests for uh, yeah. options and ideas that they would like to yeah, hear and add that to one. your playlist yeah my friend did that actually she had like what song is definitely going to get you on the dance floor and everyone had to write in their favorite song and I must say their dance floor was pretty filled all night so that was a good one yeah perfect so if you're running out of um, song ideas that's a good solution to yeah. um, make sure your guests are happy too yeah absolutely so I think it's a good do for for your own music yeah perfect so let's go we do yay <laughs> so what about catering yeah, I don't even know how that's an option, to be honest, <laughs> to DIY your catering. It's just kind of mind-boggling for me. I think if you're going to do any form of catering, maybe grazing boards or something like that. But something more simple. Still, yeah, still I'm kind of not a fan because there's you need food safety handling certificates. And imagine if you gave your whole wedding party or your whole wedding guest food poisoning from like bad meats or cheese or something. So yep. yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Something I'd be scared of is under catering. Yeah. And just, yeah, the logistics of where you cook it and how you keep it all warm and where you store it in the yeah. meantime, yeah. when especially in our Queensland weather being yeah. humid and hot. Yeah. Um, and then who's going to serve that? What location is it in? Is it sitting in the sun? Yeah, for me, it's a it's a big no. I um I just couldn't. Yeah, I feel like for me, food is such an important part of a wedding and a celebration, and you just want that to be a good memory for your guests rather than an absolute disaster. People get excited <laughs> about food. Why oh, not? God, yeah, I race to get my menu. Like I'm like, oh, what's on the nest tonight? Oh. So we're going with don't cater for your own wedding. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I think that's definitely splurge on that one if you can. <laughs> <laughs> what about DIY wedding venues? Yeah, we do a lot of DIY wedding venues, um, especially where people might get an Airbnb property or there's actual wedding venues where you just hire out a really beautiful block of land. Or even um, your own backyard. Yeah, we've done those too. And it's so lovely for the couple being able to walk outside and see that that's where they got married. Um, definitely do. But don't do it if it's for cost. I don't think that DIY wedding venues anymore are going to be cheaper necessarily as a restaurant style venue who has like a set per price per head. Um, with wedding venues that are just a block of land, for example, you need so much more. So your portal loose, generators, extension cords, um, Gosh, your marquee if it rains. Chairs, tables, yeah. um, storing the food. Yeah, cool rooms and things like that is a big one. Um, and then sometimes it is more fun though. Like you can have like a wed fest vibe where you've got food trucks and your guests are camping and things like that. It, it's more of an experience and you get a little bit more flexibility in kind of like your curfews and your noise like limitations and things yes. like that. Got to so, remember your neighbours. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I think it's awesome and I love them and they're so much fun. But if it's a cost factor, I probably would say no. But if it's something that you guys want as an experience and create a really casual, fun setting, I would say yes. So you can definitely always do family photos and that at home as well. So if you are wanting to capture that moment that you grew up in your own family home, um, you were wanting to get married at home on your estate, yeah. um, you could always do your family photos at home before you do leave um, so that you can capture that special memory on the yeah, day absolutely. That'd be as lovely. an option. Yeah. So we're going with um, wedding venues as a DIY option as a... I'd say a... Two? Don't, don't for DIY. <laughs> yeah, there's so much involved. I think just get a coordinate. I'd still do a wedding at a DIY venue, but definitely with the help of a coordinator to help you get everything. So at least if off. you do have a wedding venue, you do also get a coordinator. Whereas I guess at home, that's something that's not included. Yeah. And then if something does go wrong on the day in regards to a venue perspective, you do have the venue that is liable that will be able to go out and fix things or have yeah. get people on site to know how to do things. Whereas at home, it's you guys. Yeah. So moving on, weddings do approximately take around three months with all the extra planning. So it's around 528 hours, which is a lot of time that goes from everywhere, from looking up Pinterest through to Instagram, searching suppliers, <laughs> um, looking at wedding venues, doing tours. Mm -hmm. um, so weddings do take a lot of your personal time. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes I find that brides get really overwhelmed. Like, where do they start? Um, and I probably just recommend sitting down with your fiance and just having a chat about what's really important to you guys. Like if you think about 
what your overall budget is that is within your means don't go into crazy debt for your wedding like just do with it within your means and chat about okay what's going to be really important to us do we want to spend most of the money on the food or do we want to spend most money on flowers or candles and things like that so just kind of chat about what's important to you guys so that you can kind of customize things to suit Perfect. And our last video, we did talk about a lot about budget. Um, so if you do refer to our last video, you'll be able to see a breakdown of our recommended budget um, yeah. and where's the best to spend your money. But obviously go with your gut and your um, what you feel more comfortable with than what's important to you. All right. So DIY gone wrong. Katie, I'm sure you've got a few stories. One that pops into mind was we we're working out a DIY property so it's um out at the back of the hinterland on the gold coast and it's this gorgeous block of land really really popular for diy weddings um, and the bride had booked us in for coordination on the day only um, and she wanted to do all of the setup herself on the day before with all of her friends and family who were going to be on site which was awesome on the morning of we arrived there to start the coordination um, and then we walked into her clear marquee being a really hot summer's day and all of her centerpieces had fully melted so she had a mirror base with like pillar candles that were all beautiful and naked not in a cylinder or anything like that on the tables and they were just this flat melted thing that was all through her tablecloths and everything and it was absolutely heartbreaking how are we going to fix this so luckily the bride did have some spares that's a little tip there bring some spares um but still the marks were always kind of there for the rest of the evening we tried to cover them up as best as we could um and because we were booked as a coordinator not necessarily a stylist on that day um there was only so much we could do so yeah that was a really um they put in so many hours of hard work and so just to see it all kind of melt was pretty heartbreaking so all these extra things that you need to take in consideration yeah. um melting candles in the heat something you yeah. don't quite often think about yeah well that's the thing with a diy property wedding if you're getting a marquee unless you're getting a really fancy marquee you're not going to have air conditioning so definitely in terms of setting up your centerpieces flowers as well they're not going to like the heat so just keeping that in mind and I've got a cake story where I had a bride bake her own wedding cake. Obviously, it takes a lot of time, so I was prepping days before. Managed to get the cake to the venue, looking great. Cutting the cake happened, about to serve it to the guests, and we cut in and the middle's raw. Oh, gosh. Can't serve the wedding cake. Um, so obviously, guests went without wedding cake on the day. Brides put a lot of work into it. Guests saw the wedding cake on display, so obviously, oh. when guests go home, they go, oh, we what didn't happened? get the wedding cake. So oh. obviously giving that back to a bride that spent yeah. a lot of time prepping and preparing and getting a, getting her cake to the venue before the day and making sure it's all perfect yeah. to then cut into a raw cake is so disappointing Did after all her? the extra time. We obviously do oh. have to tell the bride and groom because obviously yeah. – you're not obviously fulfilling your contract when you're not serving the wedding cake as yeah. per the running sheet. Oh. Um, so obviously advising them, unfortunately, which obviously yeah. you don't want to upset them on their wedding day, but obviously they need to be aware that obviously it's happened. So oh, she would have um, felt so bad as well thinking that she she'd done a perfect job perfect and it job. looked amazing and she was happy with it. And then yeah. turns out it wasn't cooked in the center. So definitely yeah. DIYs can go wrong. So definitely weigh up whether it's worth obviously investing in a supplier to take that stress yeah. and obviously on everything from you on the day absolutely thanks everyone for watching part one in part two we'll be talking about some more secrets in our diy with katie